Tired of manually sending emails with tons of attachments? Let me help you automate it. Watch this video to learn how to streamline your email process and save time with Power Automate. The idea here would be to have a list of users that would like to send attachments to and a folder where we would keep all the attachments needed to be sent. And in order to define the relationships between the attachments and users, we would have an extra Excel spreadsheet to identify those relationships. So to run automation, we would need two tables in Excel. The first one would be the email list. Just keep in mind that emails here should be unique, only one at a time. And additionally, we can have also the names defined for each specific email. So to create a table, you simply click insert and click on the table. And in the table design, you can define the table name that will further used in the Power Automate. And the second table here in the spreadsheet will be the attachments, where we will define the relationships between the attachments that we have and the emails, right? So for example, for the first email, we would send these three attachments. And for the second one, we would send these two attachments. Also, you would need to have a table created here, same way, insert table. And in table design, you can call it as the attachments underscore table. We would need to have the place where the files can be stored. For example, they can be stored in the OneDrive. Or the additionally, they can be stored in Teams. When you come to the Power Automate platform, you would see the homepage that defines what it is about. Basically, the Power Automate helps you to streamline all your daily routine tasks, save much time, and also make you much more effective while working. In this case, we would create the flow by clicking on the Create, and we would use the Instant Cloud flow. So this flow will be triggered by you, you always can schedule the cloud flow as well. That will be another option. You can also try it out. We can call it as emails with attachments as a name for our workflow. So the first component is called a trigger. It simply activates our workflow. We don't need to do anything with that. We would need to define the next sequential steps. For that, we need to click the plus button and add the action where we would type the Excel as we would like to get the email list, first of all. Here, it's important to note that you are most likely on a corporate version of the Power Automate, right? That's why I use the Excel Online Business um, module for that. I'm personally using my own OneDrive, so I would use the OneDrive in my case, but you may need to use the business version. So for the Excel, I'd like to select the list rows present in the table. You can find it, it's exactly the same action. So I'll select this module, and then I would need to find, to locate my Excel file that I defined previously. I would need to go to my folder, Power Automate, and select my Excel. And as a table, I would like to select the email table, right? So this will be my first component that I can call as the source one, get emails list, okay? It will be our first source. Next one will be basically to get the attachments as the second source. We, again, we need to refer to the same Excel file that we defined, but to the second table, attachments table. And this table is important for us because it tells us what are the relationships between the, the attachments and the emails, right? We would need to understand which files we would like to send and to which users. So this one I can call as the source to get attachments corresponding to emails. Okay. So now we define two sources. The next step would be to initialize the attachment array. And for this one, we need to write initialize variable. 
and we here want to initialize an array that will store all the attachments for a specific email user. Okay, so we can call it as the attachment array and we can define it as the array type with the empty value. It's a known value for initialization. And what we'll do next is we would like to define our first loop that will iterate over our emails, okay? So we have, we have the emails here that like to iterate and for each email we would like to get attachments. So we will use two loop uh, logic here. So the first loop would be iterating over emails. For that we would need to find a component for each or apply to each. And here we would use the output from the previous step. You can see here we can click on this button, dynamic content, and we can select the body. We can select the first source, get email list. We need to we need to have the body and value because this is where the email list will come from. The next component would be to set our variable attachment array. Set the variable, okay? Refer to our attachment array and the value would be empty list. And I'm doing this because for each email we would need to reset our attachment array, right? We don't need to send the same emails to other users in the line. It needs to be a new array of attachments for each user in the loop. So we define the attachment and then we can filter the attachments for a specific email using the filter array component. So as a array to filter we would use here now we will use the source tool because we would like to filter the attachments. We will use the body value here. Okay. In the filter query, we would like to define the column that we would like to filter. And if you go back to the attachments, you would see that the column name is the email. And here we would like to only get the first three attachments for the first email in the loop, right? Suppose that we have the first email, example gmail.com, then we only need to filter these three attachments. And when we have the second email in the loop, we would need to filter and only get these two attachments. That's the logic behind. It's important to, to know that we can define the functions in Power Automate. In this case, we would define the function called item I would refer to the email column that will be equal to the current email address and for that we would need to go to the loop current item and we need to select email okay so we added the filter we can also rename this as for each email in email list this will make more sense to you guys and the second loop will be to iterate over attachments, right? And compile them into the single variable that we will use in other email to the specific user. This one we can call as for each attachment in attachments in email user attachments, okay? In the second loop, we would like to extract the files that we have in the folder and use them as attachment. For that, we would need to extract the file content and the file name separately. So first, let's extract the file content. We can type file co content. Again, important to note, if you're using the Teams, then you will need to use the SharePoint and then you can use get file content using path. For Teams, in order to use this functionality, you most likely need to synchronize this with your corporate laptop. It's very easy. You can simply open the channel and you will see this synchronize 
option there you can click it and then you'll be able to synchronize teams channel there and if you use onedrive again use the get file content using path i selected the component and then i need to specify the file then go back and specify any file i want okay it doesn't matter at this level so we can select this and then we will do the same for the file name but for the file name just keep in mind that we would use another component that will be called get file metadata using path okay so we need to extract metadata as well because we would need to use the file name in our attachment so we select the file and then what we need to do is we need to have the dynamic name in the file path right because we don't need to attach the same file over and over again we want to have it dynamically right assigned here we can use the expression and we can refer to our loop for each attachment in the mail user attachments and here we can refer to the column called file name right you can find it here it's called file name you can call it any name you want just keep in mind that it should be the same name okay so we define it then also don't forget to add the slash here to complete the path and do the same for metadata too so now we define the file contents and file name right we can give it like another name like git get file name and get file content okay so it makes a bit more sense and then what we need to do is simply append this to our attachment array okay so we click append append to array variable we refer to our existing attachment array here we need to define the schema it's very simple so we need to open the curly braces where the first parameter will be called name okay that's a file name where we would refer to the dynamic content i can as you can see here name get file name name very simple then comma and the content bytes is basically the attachment file right it's the content of our attachment and we can refer it as well dynamically to the file content that we have defined previously and we need to close our curly braces so we define the attachment how it's added and now you can see that we have two loops defined the first one iterates over each email in the email list and for each email we iterate over attachments and append them to the array in order to further use as attachment for our email so the next step and it's the last one would be to actually send the email right so we can select the send email component and here we can define a few dynamic variables that we will use in email the first one would be to define the recipient where we would refer to the sorry this will be written here in the function we would refer to the email right in the subject we can say attachments for and then give it a name of the individual like name and here we can also specify like the name as well using the function So keep in mind whenever you refer to the loop 
variables, you can use the item function like this, and you can refer to the specific column in this way. Okay, so we need to send the email and also call it with the right name, and we need to attach, write the files. And for that, we need to open the advanced parameters. And in attachments, we need to switch to the function mode and we need to select our variable attachment array. If you like to add someone in the copy, you can always define the extra variables in the emails here. For example, you can create a new column, you can call it as cc and you can add invoice in gmail.com. Okay? So now you have the cc variable here and to refer it to your flow, you come here and you type the function that will be item cc call. Okay? So now let's test it. For the test, I will use my own personal email and now I can run. I can click save. And yeah, keep in mind, guys, I forgot to select the output from the previous steps in the second loop. So just don't forget to select the output, which will be the filter array. Okay, click save. It saved successfully, and now we can test. The flow ran perfectly. If we open the emails, it perfectly worked with the attachments and everything. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to see more about automations like Power Automate, Zapier, other tools, please let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and see you soon. Bye.